Morning, my name's Chris Dunning. I run an IT business called TechQuarters. We're based here in Wimbledon and we specialise in cloud computing for small to medium sized businesses. This morning I'm going to give you a very brief presentation on what cloud computing is all about. So we're going to take you on a journey to the cloud. This is me driving a little bus here and uh, this is probably you and some of the troublesome people at the back here. Um, so I think it's a good start to talk about what the cloud is all about. Um, it's very much not the clouds that you see in the sky with the sun behind them. There are definitely no computers out there in the ether in the clouds. Uh, this is my attempt at drawing one of those old techies with the long hair and the coat sitting in front of their machines. The interesting fact here is that they used to draw the internet as a cloud on their old diagrams in the 80s. And that's actually where cloud computing, the name, has come from. What cloud computing really is all about, though, is these data centers. Data centers are like very big sheds full of computers out in the, uh, you know, outside of London. So picture a football pitch worth of these computers all chained together in a very large shed, and that's what a data center is. They have huge amounts of security, they have oil bunkers in the basement that keep the power going. They have these things called halon gas fire suppression to stop them bit overheating and uh, stopping them working. So that's really what you're connecting to when you connect to the cloud. But how do I get on in my cloud, as uh, uh, Keith Richard would probably say? Uh, well, all you need is a browser. Really, the biggest prevalence of the cloud computer market surrounds software as a service. So, what I mean by that is you connect to your software application through a browser. And the browsers that you probably use are Google, Safari, Internet Explorer, and there's a number of others, mainly Firefox. But it's interesting that as long as you have a browser, you can connect to your cloud application through whatever device you have. So it could be an iPad, it could be a PC, it could be a Mac, it could be a phone. As long as you have a browser and an internet connection, away you go, you can connect to the cloud. But how does it actually work? Well, quite simply, your connection from your device connects through onto the internet and then it handshakes or it connects you from a point to point with your data or your application that is sitting in this data center. So all your PCs or servers that used to be in the corner of your office, the old server, that big thing that houses all of your data, what the cloud is all about is really moving all of those servers out into data centers. Because they're the economies of scale are there for the price of putting all these servers together and housing your data out there and it's become so cost effective, there is no point in upgrading your server anymore where you could be faced with a £10,000 capital expenditure bill to get a new server, you might as well move to the cloud for a fifth of the cost. That's why it's really going to come to the fore. So typically, when you connect to your cloud, as I said, you're connecting through a browser and you put your user ID and your password in. Hands up out there who has a Gmail account or uh, we use a mail marketing tool called MailChimp. All of those connect to through a user and a password. Hotmail is another one. So they're, they're all coming out of the wash now. Lots and lots of software as a service to connect you to your cloud. Some very quick interesting facts. Uh, what you might remember from the uh, late 80s was the old green screen and the old mainframe. Well, that actually was a form of cloud computing because everything was processed on the large mainframe. However, it's almost like we've done a full circle now because you can now connect your device to the mainframes being the data centers. Uh, so it's just the fact is the technology is available to allow us to do it now. Also, the interesting thing is why Amazon have become so prolific at uh, providing servers out in the cloud for such ridiculously good rates. Because they found when they were delivering all of their goods that they, they ran their systems on these servers that had huge amounts of capacity and they were only really using 10% of those servers. So some bright spark at Amazon said, actually, what we can do is we can use that. We can package up all of that spare capacity 
and we can sell it out to the crowd and out to the, uh, the public, the general public. And that's what they've done. And here's another one actually, Microsoft's cloud servers account for three football pitches worth of servers all chained together uh, and they're located in Dublin uh, and they're also backed up to uh, Amsterdam and that services the whole of the uh, EMEA region. But why the sudden explosion? Two very very simple facts. We have the speed, we have the need for speed. Uh, the internet now is, is uh, running ADSL broadband connections at you know, 20, 30, 40 times faster than the old modems that we used to connect to the internet on. The old <laughs> all gone now. Now broadband connection is ubiquitous. Also we have some of these very, very bright spark developers that can recreate all those uh, applications or create them from afresh but create them within a browser. So you have an application that sits there that connects out to this data center through the internet. I normally ask people actually, why are we interested? Um, and it's, a, it's an, everybody gets involved. And typically what I hear is flexibility, flexible working, business continuity, um, and the cost efficiencies, the savings that you can make by adopting a migration to the cloud. Um, this is an interesting fact actually. Home workers in the last 10 years has risen from 2.6% to 20% in just 10 years. And I believe that the stat is 46% of SMEs actually work from home. Um, so lots of change. So really, on to my final slide. What is the future for the cloud? What is the future for us? Well, certainly the devices that we connect to the internet on will all change again. So we've seen the uh, advent of the iPad, the iPad 2. Uh, pretty soon we'll be seeing perhaps devices that are on your arm, you know, perhaps devices that are in your kitchen, using, uh, you can tune your own personal settings perhaps through a little iPad that connects into all of your applications within your kitchen, runs your oven, and it's a crazy amount of uh, ways that you'll be able to connect to the internet on. Uh, so phones will become the main device for the next year or two. Handhelds. Um, has anybody seen the Minority Report? Uh, probably. Uh, well, that's a good way of looking at how things will change, where you can move applications around on a screen. And that will soon pretty much come to the fore. Um, we also believe that uh, you will find applications or controlling hardware through things like vending machines or uh, even alarm clocks by the side of your bed will be little cloud-based applications. So I just want you to think about how and what this will change into in the future because it, it's, it's endless with uh, the data that's stored out there on the internet and, uh, and that is the future of the cloud. So thanks very much for listening and uh, I hope you enjoyed.